Hello once again guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. So what we're gonna be talking about today in this video is blogging and basically what you need to know to start a blog right now in 2019. Now for those of you who might not be familiar, I actually own a blog. It is an investing blog that talks about the stock market and some personal finance related topics and that is investingsimple.blog. Now I actually started this blog back in August of 2018. I ended up buying an Instagram page also called Investing Simple and it came with this blog that was somewhat established and so I said, well, at this point I own a blog, I might as well do something with it. And from August until now, um, I've been able to scale it up to a point where we're making anywhere around $1,500 to $2,000 a month from this blog. And I'm actually gonna go in and show you guys the earnings from this blog and show you, you know, what we are doing to actually make money with it. Because when most people think of blogging, they usually think of talking about Starbucks beverages and whatever you're eating that given day. And that is not what blogging is. Uh, it can be that, but that's not gonna make you any money. And most people, at least these days, have the idea of making money uh, with anything that they're doing online, and you can absolutely make money with your own blog. And we're gonna go through basically the seven steps to get started with blogging in 2019, and what I have learned over the last six months or so running this blog as far as what are the main areas that you have to focus on in order to start growing an audience. Now I know this is going to be a long video, so I just wanna give you guys a quick synopsis of what we're gonna be covering in this video. First of all, we're gonna be talking about is blogging dead? Is it even worth starting right now? And the answer is absolutely yes. Then we're gonna talk about how to create your own self-hosted WordPress website, which is what I recommend and most people out there would recommend. Then we're gonna get into talking about how to brand your website or your blog and the importance of building a brand around what it is that you're doing. After that, we're going to move on and we're gonna talk about doing keyword research. We're gonna open up the Google keyword research tool and we're gonna go through an example of doing some SEO research for a new blog, a hypothetical blog that we would be creating here. Then we're gonna be talking about creating a content schedule for your blog. And then we're gonna talk about two more advanced strategies, which is doing guest posts on other blogs to build up your ranking or domain authority. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about collecting emails and how you can use email marketing on the back end to make more money with your blog. So this is gonna be a crazy long, but very detailed video. So I hope you guys stick around to the very end. And if not, you could always bookmark this video and come back to it at a later time because it's going to be packed full of good information. So first of all, number one, let's answer the most common question that I get when I talk about blogging. Is blogging dead? Is it even worth starting a blog right now in 2019? Because when you look around, you'll notice that most people are on their phones on Instagram or they're on YouTube or they're listening to podcasts. You might be wondering, does anybody read blogs anymore? And the answer to that question is they absolutely do. A lot of people are doing research on Google and while you may be able to make YouTube videos and YouTube is the second largest search engine out there, Google is still by far the largest search engine out there. And so in terms of getting traffic to whatever platform you're building, you can still get the most traffic in my opinion by having a blog. And let me put it to you this way guys, uh, I'm in the finance niche here on YouTube and my blog is also finance related. With a finance YouTube channel, you could probably make you know, I don't know, 30 to $50,000 per month, which is still an astounding amount of money. But I personally know personal finance blogs that are making 10 times that amount. They're making anywhere from $500,000 to even more than that in some cases every single month. We're talking multi-million dollar per year blogs because of the volume of search traffic available to you through Google. So there is definitely money to be made. I'm gonna show you guys the earnings from my blog just to give you guys proof of this. Um, but I want you guys to understand what kind of blogging that I'm talking about here. I am not talking about lifestyle blogs, food blogs, you know, talking about your pets and things like that. That's probably not going to be a blog that makes you a lot of money. It might be an interesting hobby and maybe it's something you like to do on the side for fun, but it's probably not gonna be putting any money in your bank account at the end of the day. The kind of blogging that's gonna be making you money is this authoritative, niche-specific blogging where you're essentially becoming you know, the credible source on that given topic. 
And so what exactly does this involve? We're gonna go into my blog and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of examples of the types of content that we are producing for this blog. In most cases, you know, it's anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 words or longer if you're building what is called cornerstone content. Most of the articles that we're posting on my blog, and when I say we, I have two writers involved with the blog, most of the content that we're posting is over 2,000 words in length. So you should already be thinking in your head, okay, am I willing to write anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 word articles on a given topic? If your answer to that is no, then blogging is probably not going to be the right path for you. But if you're up for the challenge, it can be extremely rewarding and it can, at the end of the day, put some money in your pocket. So we're gonna jump into my computer now and I'm gonna show you guys what my blog looks like. And then we're gonna go through and look at the earnings from my blog just to prove that I'm actually making money doing this. Okay, so this right here is the home page for my blog. It's called investingsimple.blog. As you can see, it is a personal finance and investing related blog. So we talk about you know investing in the stock market. We talk a lot about crowdfunded real estate investments. That's one of the topics we're focusing in on right now. And we also talk about you know making money online, side hustle ideas. Uh, and we're also at some point gonna be getting into credit score and credit related articles. But as you can see from the homepage, uh, this right here directs you to our lead magnet here, which is our free guide to investing in the stock market. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. But just to give you guys an overview of what my blog looks like here, we have this home page, then we have a link to one of our key articles here, which is uh, what we call a cornerstone piece of content. And this article in particular, I believe, is anywhere between five or 6,000 words. And I just wanna show you guys what this looks like. So this is an article where we put obviously a lot of effort into it because it's 20 different ways how to make money online, different money-making methods. And as you can see, you know, this definitely took a lot of time. I spent a couple of days writing this blog, and this is the kind of content that you have to be comfortable with creating if you want to be successful with blogging. If you're only gonna be willing to write you know, 500 word articles, I wouldn't expect much of anything to happen because you're not writing authoritative content. So as you can see, you know, I'll keep scrolling here. This right here was a pretty lengthy cornerstone piece of content. We'll go back to the home page and I'll show you guys, you know, how am I making money from this blog? Because if you haven't noticed yet, there aren't any ads showing up. So what I'm doing is leveraging something called affiliate marketing. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know what affiliate marketing is. I am a uh, pretty successful affiliate marketer, I would say. Uh, but basically what it is, it's earning money for referrals. So I am affiliated with all of these different companies here, M1 Finance, Fundrise, Betterment, and Webull. And basically we write review articles of these different brokerage accounts. Now, if somebody reads one of these articles and they click on one of those affiliate links, we will earn a commission in the process. And that is how we are primarily earning money from this blog. It's actually the only way right now. We are not doing any kind of ads. We're doing affiliate marketing like this on the front end. And then on the back end, I'll just show you guys what this looks like. We are collecting emails and we're doing also an email sequence on the back end, which is gonna be the seventh thing we talk about in this video. But if you scroll down, this is another one of our cornerstone pieces of content here on the best real estate crowdfunding platforms. If you scroll down on the right hand sidebar, you can see our link to the beginner's guide to investing in the stock market. When somebody clicks on that, it brings them back to this page here where they can drop their name and email, and then they can uh, enroll in our email list and also receive that guide. And once they do this, they do receive a series of follow-up emails, some of which are affiliate related, which I'm going to show you guys later in this video. But that's pretty much what the blog looks like here. We have a mix of uh, value articles. I'll show you some that we've created here. Right now, like I said, we're focusing in on real estate, particularly crowdfunded real estate investing. And so we have a mixture of all kinds of different articles. But as you can see, each one that we click on here, like we'll click on uh, what is real estate crowdfunding, you'll see they're very lengthy and detailed articles that go into a lot of detail. So we're not writing thin content, we're not writing 500 word articles, we are spending you know, a fair amount of time on each one of these articles, and that is why we are having you know, success with this blog. And just to give you guys an example of what the affiliate side of this looks like, for example, here we mentioned the Fundrise crowdfunding investing platform. And if that person reads through this and decides to invest, they can click this link right here. And this right here is an affiliate link. And if they end up signing up for Fundrise, 
we would earn a commission in the process. So this is what blogging, or at least successful blogging, looks like. It's creating authoritative content like this. It's building out cornerstone content and becoming basically the authority on a small given topic. It's not writing about Starbucks or writing about your dinner. It's creating extremely valuable resources just like this. So if you're not up for this challenge, blogging is just not going to be for you. But if you are willing to put in a lot of research, effort, and energy into making very good and authoritative content like this, I would personally highly recommend it because of the level of success I've seen with it in just a very short time. So now we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you guys some of the earnings and some proof of income for what we are earning from this blog right now. Okay, so the first earning source I'm going to show you guys here is from a small brokerage account we're affiliated with on the blog. Um, I can't tell you guys exactly which of these income sources are coming from each affiliate just because of uh, confidentiality reasons. They don't necessarily want to sharing that information, but I can show you guys the data. So this company in particular is so small that they actually created an affiliate program for me and they gave me three different unique links for tracking and I earned $30 per deposited account. So just to give you guys um, an understanding of this process, when somebody initially downloads the app, it shows up here in this left-hand column. Then they have to actually sign up for an account, basically opening that brokerage account, that's this middle column. And finally, if they sign up and make a deposit into that account, it shows up over here, and this right here is where I'm making $30 per sign up. So I have two different links here. This third one here for Instagram, uh, we didn't have any conversions from Instagram this month, so we're going to ignore that. So this right here is all of the traffic coming from the blog, and this right here is all of the traffic coming from my YouTube channel. So in total, you can see here that we had 131 accounts that were deposited, meaning we made 131 times 30 for the month, which I'll go ahead and show you guys that number in a second. But in particular, what we care about is how much money we made from the blog. So we'll jump over to this tab here, and under the deposits column here, you can see we had 38 deposits. So the amount of money we made in the month of March was 38 times 30. And just to show you guys what that looks like on the calculator here, 38 times 30, we had uh, basically $1,140 of earnings just from this one affiliate from the blog. So that is the first earnings source I'm going to be showing you. Okay, so the second affiliate source I'm going to show you here is in a dashboard called Impact Radius. This is an affiliate management dashboard that a lot of different companies use. And so we are looking at the data for last month. And as you can see here listed, we have investingsimple.blog. You can see that we had $100 of earnings from this particular affiliate in the month of March. So we'll go ahead and add that to our monthly total. So we're at 12.40 for the month so far. And that was actually it for the month. I thought we had one other commission, but I was mistaking it. So that was $1,240 for the month of March. And like I said, this usually ranges from around $1,500 to $2,000 per month based on how these different um, affiliates we have convert. And so basically, if you think about the fact that I started this blog back in August of 2018, and here we are roughly seven months later, and this blog is consistently making around you know, $1,500 to $2,000 per month, this month in particular, 1,240, it's pretty astounding that you can start something and basically six to eight months after you start it, be making over $1,000 per month from that blog. So I just wanted to show you guys that, what my blog looks like and some earnings proof that way you know I'm actually making money from this blog. Now we're gonna get into some of the strategies of how you can do the exact same thing and start up your own blog here in 2019. Okay, so we just went over section one on whether or not blogging is dead. Obviously guys, it is not. Uh, section number two, we're gonna talk about how to create your blog and what you're going to be creating is something called a self-hosted WordPress website. So WordPress is basically the industry standard out there when it comes to blogging, and about 30% of all websites on the internet are made on WordPress. So I would recommend using WordPress, especially for a blog. Pretty much every blogger I know out there is using WordPress, and I'll give you guys a quick overview of what that looks like on the back end here with my blog. So if you notice this bar at the top, this is a, the WordPress dashboard or the um, navigation toolbar. And if you click on this here, it brings you into the back end. This right here is what WordPress is. This is where your website lives. You get your comments here. You can see all of your different posts. You can see which ones I have in drafts. 
and you can also use a number of different plugins for pretty much anything you're looking to do with your website. So I would not mess around with any of these other platforms out there. I would follow the industry standard and I would create a WordPress self-hosted website. Now, you may be asking a question here of whether or not you're creating a WordPress.com website or WordPress.org, and I wanna go over what the difference is between those two things now. So this is one of the interesting things about WordPress. If you're looking to create a website, you appear to have two different options here. You have WordPress.com, and then you have WordPress.org. And which one of these do you want to be using? You want to create a WordPress.org self-hosted website for a number of different reasons. So basically WordPress.com is like a drag and drop website builder where if you want to be lazy and build a website on WordPress, you can do this through WordPress.com, but I would not recommend it. The blog that I purchased, Investing Simple, used to be a WordPress.com website, and we had to go through the lengthy process of transitioning it into a WordPress.org self-hosted website. And the number one reason, or there were two core reasons that we did this. Number one was the level of flexibility and the uh, basically the different changes we could make to the website. We wanted to have the open source functionality of WordPress.org to be able to make major changes to the website. And number two, the biggest piece for us was the site speed. You're not going to get good site speeds when you host a website on one of these drag and drop site builders. And that is the number one most important thing you have to consider when you're starting your blog. And we'll talk about that in a little bit and you'll understand more why the site speed is so important. So you don't wanna start off on wordpress.com even if they're offering you a free site because eventually you're gonna want your own website and you're gonna to have to go through this lengthy process of transitioning your website. I would not recommend it having gone through that process. So instead, what you're looking to build on is wordpress.org, and this is actually software, open source software you're going to install onto your self-hosted website platform. So rather than going through wordpress.com and using their servers to host your website, you're going to go through a separate web host and you're going to host your own website and create a self-hosted WordPress website, primarily for the ability to have that flexibility with customizations to be able to install your own theme on that site. And second of all, the ability to have a faster load speed, which is going to be crucial when it comes to SEO. Now, I know this may sound really confusing to you guys, but I promise you it's not. These are just gonna be building blocks for you. It's not that difficult to create a self-hosted WordPress website. And we're gonna jump over and I'm gonna show you guys what host I use. And they have a very, very easy process here for WordPress websites, helping you get off the ground and get started. So how much money is going to be involved with getting your self-hosted WordPress website off the ground? We're not talking about a ton of money here, but there is going to be a small initial investment. You're going to need two things. Number one, you're going to need to buy a custom domain. If you're not willing to invest in a custom domain, you're not gonna take this seriously enough and blogging is just not for you. As far as domains go, I like using Google domains. There's a ton of different ones out there. There's GoDaddy, there's all kinds of different ones, but I find Google domains is pretty convenient. And let's just say, you know, I wanted to buy Cupcake, uh, Cupcake Delaware as a domain. I don't, I don't even know that's available. We'll go ahead and take a look here. So we'll see if Cupcake Delaware is available. It's probably not actually, that's probably a pretty popular domain. Oh, it actually is. Okay, so let's say I had a cupcake business in Delaware. I was looking to buy cupcakedelaware.com. I can literally do this right here on Google Domains and that's gonna cost you, it looks like about $12 per year. And so that's something you're gonna have to buy and you're gonna have to renew that on an annual basis to have your own custom domain. So that is going to be, you know, your very first step is buying a domain for yourself. But if you don't quite know what this is going to be yet, you can always revisit this later when you decide on a domain. The second thing you have to decide is who is actually going to be hosting your WordPress website. And personally, I use a service called SiteGround. And the reason why I like SiteGround is because they offer plans specifically for WordPress website hosting. And you'll be able to see these right here. And what I like about this too is they have different levels based on how many monthly visitors you're going to be expecting. And it's honestly quite reasonable. The startup plan is for roughly 10,000 visits per month on your blog, and that's gonna be 395 per month, I believe, if you do the annual billing. 
Grow Big is the one in the middle here. It gives you a little bit of a larger uh, you know, range in terms of your website visits, about 25,000 visits per month. And then the plan all the way here on the right is the one that I believe we are subscribed to. And that's up to 100,000 visits per month on your blog in terms of good, reliable website speed. Now in a minute here, I'm gonna actually do speed tests on my website just to prove to you guys that I have exceptional speeds from site ground. And that is the number one most important thing when it comes to search engine optimization is how fast your website speed is loading. Google does care about your content and they care about other factors when it comes to SEO. But if you have a slow website, you might as well not even have a website at all in some cases. Because what you have to understand is that if your website is slower than your competition, then nobody is going to see your website because your competitor's website is going to be pushed higher in the rankings. Because Google understands people are extremely impatient and they just can't deal with slow websites. If you have a slow website, it is not going to rank nearly as well as a fast website. And that comes down to number one, mainly your website hosting. That is why I recommend SiteGround. And I am affiliated with SiteGround. If you guys feel that you would like to use my link, it's available in the description below. Like I said, I am an affiliate marketer. That's how I make money online. Uh, and if you have found this video to be useful so far, I would certainly appreciate it if you did use my link, but you absolutely do not have to. But I am going to link to everything I discuss in the description below. That way you have those helpful steps to follow uh, to get your blog off the ground. So in terms of the cost associated with your website, we're talking about you know $12 per year or $2 per month for your domain name and anywhere from $4 to $12 per month for website hosting. So basically anywhere from six to $14 per month using Google domains and SiteGround is about what you would expect to pay to get your website off the ground and running. Okay, so you now understand the importance of having a fast website. Now I wanna do a speed test of my own blog just to show you guys what kind of performance we are getting from SiteGround. And I'm gonna show you guys an example of some websites that are well optimized for speed and some websites that have horrible speed times that is definitely going to be affecting their search engine optimization. But before I do that, I wanna get into a quick story here about a finance blog called The Balance. I'll open it up on my computer just so you guys can see what it looks like. It's a multi-million dollar finance blog out there. And I actually got to meet these people at a uh, outreach event for one of my affiliates. Now, while I was there, they told me they had invested millions, millions of dollars into improving the load speed of their website by fractions of a second. I'm talking millions of dollars that went into this. Why would they be doing that if website speed was not important? It is the most important factor when it comes to search engine optimization. And they spent millions of dollars on having engineers figure out how to get their website to load faster. And as a result, we'll open up the balance or we'll do a search here just to show you guys how good the speeds are for the balance.com. Uh, it's really quite unbelievable, but obviously you don't have millions of dollars to spend on that. I just wanna show you what a well-optimized website looks like in terms of performance. So I'm actually surprised here. Their mobile website didn't actually score that well here at 49, which is on the slower side, but I'm assuming they optimized this for desktop speed. When you jump over to desktop, you can see they're at a 91, which is a very fast website. That comes from a lot of money being invested into this platform. So now let's take a look at investingsimple.blog. This is my blog that is hosted on SiteGround and take a look at my speed score here from Google Speed Insights. So as you can see, our score is actually pretty decent here. For mobile, we are at about a 72, which is just about average, which is probably pretty decent. Um, we're gonna basically compare it to other finance blogs out there. You wanna make sure that your website is at least as fast as somebody else's in your niche. Otherwise, they're going to be outranking you simply because their website is faster. So we got a 72 when it comes to mobile. And on desktop, we scored extremely well here too, almost about as good as the balance here with a 92. So we have excellent load speeds here because of the site ground hosting and also some other tweaks and optimizations on our blog. But that is the number one most important thing that you have to focus on. So one of the blogs in my niche that is, I guess, competition to me is Good Financial Sense. It's another finance blog out there. I'll show you guys what it looks like. 
and they have a great blog that's one that's generating, you know, this is one of the multi-million dollar per year blogs. This is Jeff Rose, you've probably seen him on YouTube. And so we'll go ahead and put his blog in here just to compare it to mine to see if I have comparable load speeds to his blog. Now, for whatever reason, Jeff's website actually scores pretty bad here for mobile at a 28, uh, but when it comes to desktop, he's at an 82. So I don't know if his page has more going on. It seems to be a little bit more detailed than the home page for Investing Simple. Obviously, his blog is making multi-millions of dollars per year, so he, they know what they're doing with their blogging and with everything with that. Uh, but just to show you guys, I am at least at par with the other blogs out there in terms of the speed of my website. Now, if you guys are concerned about figuring out how to set up your self-hosted WordPress website, one of the best resources out there for finding freelancers who can help you with things is Fiverr. I use Fiverr all the time. We're gonna talk about it next for step number three, which is branding your website. But I also just wanted to show you, you can find WordPress related services right here on Fiverr, people who can help you improve your website speed. They can help you with setting up your WordPress self-hosted website. There are all kinds of great gigs available on Fiverr. So I have also included a link for them in the description below. Uh, I am affiliated with Fiverr if you do decide to use my link. And they have also extended a discount code. If you are a first time orderer on the website and you use my discount code, you will get 10% off, but you do have to use my link as well with that discount code. Uh, that's all going to be linked up down in the description below if you guys decide to purchase a gig on Fiverr. But this is a great place here to look for gigs, to find someone to help you improve your website speed or help you set up your website initially. Um, this is especially for people who may not be tech savvy. Uh, having somebody do this for you can be quite helpful, but it's honestly not too bad. Uh, if you can follow basic YouTube tutorials, you can figure out how to get your WordPress site installed and get your blog up off the ground. Okay, so we've covered step number one, which is understanding that you know blogging is still very much alive and the type of content you're going to be creating. You understand step number two, which is creating your own self-hosted WordPress website. Step number three is figuring out the branding of your website. And I'm gonna show you guys again, we'll take a look at the branding of investingsimple.blog, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of other examples of blogs that have pretty good branding. So this right here is the Investing Simple logo. I didn't create it, I bought the blog and the Instagram from somebody else who made this nifty little logo, but I liked it and so I kept it here for my blog. And what you're noticing here is that the color scheme is pretty much similar across the blog. The yellow that we're using on the hover over is the same yellow from the uh, icon here. We have the same blue being used throughout here. And overall, the blog has a pretty consistent look and feel to it. And this is what makes your blog look credible. So it's very important to establish a brand for your blog or unless you're gonna be doing a personal brand. And what I mean by that is if I was gonna make this, you know, ryanscribner.com. Now for me, that doesn't really make sense because it's an investing blog. I wanted to have investing in the title. So I established a separate brand or I purchased it. If I, if I was making it from scratch, I would be establishing it. But you wanna decide whether or not it's gonna be you who is the blogger and you're gonna call it yourname.com or you're gonna establish your own separate brand. And I wanna show you guys a couple of other examples here of finance blogs that have good branding. So the second blog I wanna show you is called Cash Cow Couple. It's another obviously separate brand here. This is a couple that has this finance blog. And as you can see, they have their own logo up here and all of the colors are pretty much similar here. The same green is being used throughout this blog. And it gives this blog a really nice professional looking feel. And that is what you're going to be going for. The third one I'm gonna show you is one of the biggest investing blogs out there called investorjunkie.com. And this blog, again, has nice branding to it, the same similar colors and look and feel to it, and it has this logo. So I would definitely recommend ordering a professional logo unless you know how to do graphic design yourself. And a lot of the time, again, I will just do this on Fiverr. Like I said, the Investing Simple blog came with that logo, um, but I have ordered countless different logos over on Fiverr, and I've had you know success with that platform in terms of ordering logos. So just to show you guys an example here over on Fiverr, if you just type in logo design, you will get so many different logo design services. 
Um, as long as they've had a lot of five-star reviews, like these ones in particular, over a thousand five-star reviews, you know these ones are going to be good. I would just provide very specific instructions as far as what kind of colors you're looking for and what theme you're looking for with your logo. I'll go ahead and show you guys now a couple of different logos I have ordered on Fiverr that have turned out pretty good. Okay, so first of all, I had this logo made for my course. This cost me $42, which is a little bit on the higher side. You can find cheaper ones. And of course, if you are a first time orderer, I do have that 10% off discount code down in the description below for you to use if you wish. And so this logo was for my course, Six Figure Affiliate Marketing. Uh, that is exactly what that looked like here. Uh, and so I was totally happy with the logo design and it was much nicer than anything I could possibly have made myself. The other logo I had made was for a event I was hosting called Passive Income Masterclass last year. I'll go ahead and show you guys what this looks like here. And this was one of the versions of the logo. This is the one that we actually used. Came out really nice. And uh, this cost me, I believe, $42. So maybe that's about what logos are going for. Uh, but I was very happy with them. And so I would definitely recommend spending a little bit of money on a professional logo just to get your branding on point with your blog. It's going to seriously increase your level of professionalism and it's really going to help you in the long run having a consistent color scheme and logo across your blog. And once you've established you know, basically your style guideline for your blog, which is your colors, your font. You wanna be consistent across your entire blog. That way it has that same professional look and feel. You're gonna use the same color scheme. You're not gonna be using all kinds of different fonts. You want it to be consistent across the entire blog. Okay, so that wraps up step number three, which is establishing a brand for your blog and possibly, you know, ordering a logo or having a logo made. The fourth step is to conduct some keyword research to understand what type of content you're actually going to be creating. And I also want to make a note here of the difference between what we call cornerstone content and then you know regular articles that you're creating. These long articles that I've created on my blog are what we call cornerstone content because they are the most in-depth and thorough pieces of writing that we do. And then what we're creating is something called an SEO silo. Now, SEO siloing is extremely complicated, guys. I'm gonna give you a very basic explanation, but there is a really good blog article if you wanna go into more detail that I will link in the description below about SEO siloing. Uh, in terms of search engine optimization, number one, like we said, is going to be the load speed of your website. That is the most important thing. Number two is probably you know your content. You have to have good content, but after that, Following this SEO siloing strategy is extremely effective and it's what a lot of bloggers are doing now to basically, you know, get ranking and, uh, you know, get ranked in the search results and get traffic to their blogs. So I'm going to show you guys an example of what it looks like and then we're going to talk about how you're actually going to create it. So this right here is one of the cornerstone pieces of content on the blog. I believe this article is pushing 5,000, maybe even 6,000 words. And what you're noticing as we go through this article uh, is there's different links to other articles throughout. Now this is both internal linking as well as external linking, which is linking to other people's blogs. That is a common mistake um, that we will talk about a little bit later on. Uh, people won't link to other blogs or resources online and that can actually be beneficial to your SEO. But I'll go ahead and show you guys a few examples of this. Right here we have a link to my longer cornerstone content on my beginner's guide to investing in the stock market. This one right here, I believe is uh, 15,000 words, something crazy like that. But basically what it is, is as you're scrolling through this article, there are links to my other articles. And it's all these different links to these different review articles I've done. Or here under real estate investing, you can see a link to uh, Wikipedia. This is one of the external links. Um, moving further down here, here's a link to an article on making money, uh, making money with real estate. And basically what it is, is all of these articles are linking to other articles. And these other shorter articles are linking back to that cornerstone piece of content. So essentially what we're creating here is a spider web of linking within this silo of real estate investing. And it goes deeper. We have so many different articles here. Uh, owning your primary residence. This is an article on the beginner's guide to buying your first house. All content related to real estate. Uh, this one here is an external link about zoning ordinances. I didn't feel it was worthwhile writing a blog on that. 
Uh, so it's all these different internal and external links that are related to real estate investing that eventually becomes this silo that I'm creating. I'll go ahead and scroll down some more just to show you guys a few more examples. We already showed that article on how to make money with real estate. This poor credit link here goes to another piece of cornerstone content we have on how to build and improve your credit score as a young person. Here we have a link to our article on the different crowdfunded real estate investing platforms. This right here is a link to an article we did on active versus passive real estate investing. And so basically what it is, this cornerstone piece of content almost gives you an idea of all these different avenues you could go down with real estate. And if you want to learn more, you can click on each of these links and go to a separate article that goes into more detail. The best way that I can explain this is it's similar to like those choose your own adventure books, where as you read the book, you can choose, okay, am I gonna go down this path? Am I gonna go down that path? And then jump to that page. You wanna be thinking about your blog as a choose your own adventure book where people are reading through the content like this and going to all of these different articles. Uh, this one right here is an external link to Dave Ramsey's website here on flipping real estate. That's a good external link to a credible website because you can actually get you know, more ranking authority by linking to credible sources as well. So you want a mixture of internal links to other blog articles you've written, as well as external links to credible sources in your niche. Here's an article we did on being an owner occupant, if people wanna learn more about that investing strategy. So as you can see, you know, it just goes on and on. It's like a never ending article with all of these different links. Here's one we did on hiring a property manager. So it's like a never ending article here, 5,000 plus words with all these links to other articles. That is what you ultimately want to create. Now, did this happen overnight? Absolutely not. We've been working on this silo in particular for the last two months, building it out for the crowdfunded real estate investing platforms we're affiliated with, but this is what's going to give you ranking authority in that niche. Google is going to see this piece of content. They're gonna say, okay, number one, this site has good website loading speeds. Number two, you know, the content is super authoritative. It's well organized. And eventually they are going to, you know, start ranking these articles in the search results for real estate related searches. And then eventually, you know, we're gonna rank for Fundrise Review or Realty Mogul Review. And that is where we're gonna be making the money, you know, through these affiliate related reviews and articles that incorporate the affiliate links. But you have to build all of this other stuff on the back end uh, in order to become a credible source on real estate investing. So anyways, guys, that is what a silo looks like if you're actually just looking at the article. Um, we're gonna also kind of draw up a map of one just so you guys can understand what that might look like. Uh, and we're gonna be using cold brew coffee as an example. Let's say you wanted to start a cold brew coffee blog, you know, what your site structure would actually look like or how you would build out that silo. Okay, now the next tool I wanna show you guys that's extremely helpful for keyword research is the Google Keyword Planner. You do have to have a Google AdSense account, I believe, to access this, but you don't actually have to spend any money on ads, so you might find that you have to create that, but you're just gonna search for the Keyword Planner, or I'll link it up in the description below, and you're gonna click on Find New Keywords, and we're gonna go ahead and use this cold brew coffee as an example. Let's say that's the blog you're looking to start, is a blog on making cold brew coffee. So that's what we're gonna type in here, is just cold brew coffee, and see what results populate for us. Now essentially what the Google Keyword Planner does is they take a given keyword that you put in and they're going to be giving you related keywords, which is content that you might want to create for your blog. They're also going to give you an idea of the average monthly searches for that term and the level of competition. Now, when you're looking at keywords out there, there's basically two different types. There are long tail keywords, which are longer searches, which are often easier to rank for. And then there's just the shorter keywords or the main ones that a lot of people focus on. And as a up and coming blogger, oftentimes what you're going to want to do is focus on those lower competition, long tail keywords, as it's going to be easier to rank for them. Your cornerstone content might be around, you know, a very competitive topic, 
but by following the siloing strategy, you may eventually be able to rank for that uh, by building a very authoritative, you know, credible resource like I just showed you for real estate investing. So maybe your cornerstone piece of content is on cold brew coffee for beginners, but you're using long tail keywords to kind of funnel people into that silo. Uh, and that is why it's important too, in every single one of your articles off that main article to link back to the original article, your cornerstone content, because you want to drive people to that original article, the main you know, 5,000 word article, to eventually build you know, that ranking authority and get that article ranking. Um, I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys here. This is like probably you know, eight months of research coming at you in this one hour plus video, uh, but it, it's honestly just building blocks. You're gonna learn a little bit at a time and you can always bookmark this video and come back to it. Uh, if you're getting overwhelmed or you know rewatch it again, whatever you have to do. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for different ideas for articles we could write related to cold brew coffee. You can see cold brew coffee maker, cold brew cold press coffee, iced coffee recipe, cold brew coffee concentrates, and there's over 1,000 related keywords. And so you're looking for different articles that you could potentially write. So here's one here, this would be an example of a long tail keyword, best cold brew coffee maker, 1,000 to 10,000 average monthly searches, and it does have you know, high competition, so maybe this wouldn't be a perfect one. Uh, here's a lower competition keyword here, cold coffee recipe. You're essentially looking for different keywords that you could turn into articles and begin creating content around cold brew coffee. So I'm not gonna scroll through a ton, of, a ton of these. Obviously we have over a thousand search terms, but that's essentially what you're going to do. You're gonna put your keyword up top here, and then you're going to figure out what articles to write. I just wanna show you guys one more example. I'm gonna do crowdfunded real estate, which is the niche that we are going after right now with Investing Simple, just to show you guys what kind of related search terms pop up for us and some examples of these long tail keywords. So this right here is one we're going after right now, real estate crowdfunding platforms and real estate crowdfunding sites. Not a crazy high volume, you know, 100 to 1,000 searches a month, but a lot of that traffic is gonna convert very well with our affiliates, so we are definitely trying to go after that. Uh, I'll go ahead and scroll through and show you guys some more examples of these long tail sites. Um, real estate investor websites, commercial real estate crowdfunding is one crowdfunding real estate development, top real estate crowdfunding sites, that one ties into our initial article. Uh, let's see here, residential real estate crowdfunding, real estate investment fund, these are all different articles that we will want to be eventually creating uh, for our silo here. Real estate crowdfunding websites, best real estate investments. So this is exactly what you wanna be doing here is doing keyword research, looking for both long tail keywords and then shorter keywords that may be more competitive and basically just making a list of these different things that people are searching for and then figuring out how you can build your silo around that, your core article or your cornerstone piece of content and then all of your shorter articles that are going to point people back to your main cornerstone piece of content. Okay, now I already went ahead and did some research, some keyword research on the cold brew coffee niche. Now I'm going to be drawing up a structure of what this silo might look like if you're trying to make a silo around a cornerstone piece of content on cold brew coffee making and then some other articles related to that that you're going to branch off in that choose your own adventure style that I just showed you with my blog. Okay, so I went ahead and did a quick drawing here for what this might look like if you're trying to make a silo around cold brew coffee. So obviously your main article on cold brew coffee, how to make cold brew coffee or everything you need to know would be your cornerstone piece of content. That would be you know, a 5,000 plus word article that was an extremely useful resource that basically scraped the surface with everything you need to know related to cold brew coffee. And then all of your different spokes off of that silo would be these other articles that you were creating that were also pointing back to your main cornerstone piece of content. And you would link all these articles together with internal linking, and you would also incorporate external links to other credible sources, because that is ultimately going to help you make the best possible resource. So obviously up top here we have the main cornerstone piece of content, which is the cold brew coffee article. And I found that there were basically three different spokes you could do off of this. You could probably do more, uh, but this was with about 20 minutes of research. 
A lot of people are looking to know what is the best coffee maker out there in terms of making cold brew coffee. They also want to know what are the best beans to use with cold brew coffee. And third and finally, what is the best equipment? Now, when it comes to equipment, you can break that down into a couple of different levels. Number one was the filter. What kind of filter is involved with cold brew coffee? What kind of grinder, if you're grinding your own beans or if you're using uh, whole beans or if you're using already made up ground coffee? And then storage. And so this is a very basic site structure here of something you could put together. So you'd have your main cornerstone article here on cold brew coffee. And then you'd have an article here on, you know, what's the best coffee maker for cold brew coffee. And then you could write reviews of each of these different cold brew coffee makers. And that right there is how you could make money. Leveraging affiliate marketing, doing Amazon affiliate links and linking to cold brew coffee makers on Amazon, or establishing relationships directly with these manufacturers and earning a commission in the process. Uh, same thing with beans, talk about best coffee beans for cold brew coffee, whether or not you should use, you know, pre-ground coffee or grind your own beans, and then different reviews of all the different coffee beans. Again, a way for you to make money with this blog. And then best equipment, you know, what is the best filter for cold brew coffee? What's the best grinder for grinding your own beans? How should you store beans? How should you store cold brew iced coffee? And reviews of all these different pieces of equipment. So this is a very basic site tree here that you could build, uh, but this is essentially what you want to be thinking. You wanna have this whole map created before you start making content. Otherwise, you're basically just, you know, throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks at the end of the day. That's the best analogy that I have, and unfortunately, that's the strategy a lot of people follow with blogging. They don't put any thought into what they're creating, and they're just making random pieces of content. And if you think about it like this, what is it that Google is going to want to see at the end of the day? Do they want to, you know, basically rank a blog that has very, very clear content and a mapped out structure like this, where they know, you know, what they're talking about and they know what this blog is about? Or some random blog that one day they talk about how to change your oil in your car and the next day they're talking about, you know, how to make spaghetti sauce and all of these random topics. They are going to reward authority and they want to push these very well built out authoritative resources and essentially these silos that people are creating. So I think this is an absolute must if you're looking to be successful with blogging is following the siloing strategy and building out a site map like this or at least a guideline of what you're going to be doing and this is going to ultimately drive your content creating strategy and you are very clearly establishing what is your cornerstone piece of content and you're always pushing people back to that main article. Okay, that wraps up step number four, which was doing keyword research and essentially building out a plan for the articles you're going to be creating. Step number five is coming up with a content schedule that's going to fit your life. Uh, we're not gonna spend much time talking about this, but what I want you to understand is that Google rewards those who regularly contribute to the platform. It's not about writing 50 articles in your first week. It's about being consistent and regularly adding value to any platform, whether it's YouTube or maybe it's a blog or whatever it may be. What I have found to be true is that those who are consistent on a regular basis, adding value and creating content are the ones who are successful. So how consistent can you be? That all depends on your own life and your schedule and how many good articles you can write per week. Uh, the Investing Simple blog, we have two different writers. One is a partner where we're 50-50, and the other one is just a writer that's a contractor who writes one article for us per week. Uh, and so we usually average two to three articles per week. It's a volume that we can handle, and we're very consistent posting new articles, typically every two or three days on the blog. Do you need to post that much? Absolutely not. You could get away with posting probably once a week. Anything less than that, I would probably, you know, try to at least do one article per week if you can. But you just want to be consistent and ultimately figure out a content schedule that is going to fit with your lifestyle. It needs to be sustainable. It needs to be something you could do for the next two, three, or five years not something you're gonna be able to do for a week, but then you're gonna burn yourself out. And when it comes to blogging, my recommendation is to write your cornerstone piece of content first, because that's really going to guide you as to where you should go to branch out. 
Once you have your cornerstone content laid out, you understand this massive article and all the potential spokes you could build related to that core topic. So I always recommend writing that 5,000 plus word cornerstone piece of content first and then branching out and creating that silo. But you can absolutely follow step four, which we did already, and do your keyword research and draw out your site map uh, as far as how you're going to structure that silo. I think that's an excellent step to follow before you begin you know, actually writing for your blog. And then the other thing I wanted to mention here is if you are building multiple silos on your website, which we are, we've kind of made this mistake, but we've gotten away from it now, you want to build one silo at a time. Otherwise, Google can kind of get confused about what your blog is about. So we have three core silos, actually four silos on the Investing Simple blog. One of them is make money online, the other is real estate investing, the other one is credit score, and the other one is investing. Each one of those silos is gonna take us probably six months to a year to build out. And so we kind of had the wrong strategy at first. We were trying to do everything at once, but now we are just focusing in to our core silo, which is going to be the real estate investing that eventually funnels people into the crowdfunded real estate investing platforms that we review, which allow us to earn affiliate income. So decide on a silo and build one of them at a time to build authority in that specific niche. And then just to show you guys, if you do have a budget to have someone write blogs for you, it definitely can help you. Uh, we take a lot of the earnings from the blog and reinvest it back into the blog. And so we take our earnings and we spend it on content. That way we have more content that gets more eyeballs on the blog and then we're gonna make more money. And it's kind of a snowball effect by reinvesting those earnings. Um, we actually have somebody locally who writes for us, but you can find great writers on Fiverr, believe it or not. Um, I have had some writing done on Fiverr. You can see there's all kinds of different categories here for writing. They can do articles and blog posts. So for example, let's say I wanted someone to write for my blog, a finance blog. I can type in here, you know, finance writing or finance blog and see what comes up. And I can specifically find people who will write articles on personal finance for my blog if I wanted to. So here's someone, for example, with 57 five-star reviews, and she says that she will write, you know, a high-quality article for your blog. And obviously, you know, you want to be writing stuff that's usually 2,000 words or more. So for that, she would charge, you know, $240. It's not going to be cheap for a good writer, uh, but it is going to be worth it in the end to have quality content on your blog. And so hiring writing on Fiverr or sites like Upwork uh, can be an option for you to grow your blog and it can also be good to reinvest some of your earnings back into content like we're doing over on Investing Simple. Okay, so that wraps up step number five, which is basically figuring out a content schedule that's going to work for your life. Step number six and step number seven are advanced strategies you can follow that are going to help you grow your blog faster and actually make more money. So step number six is figuring out other blogs that you can guest post on because this is going to build up your backlinks. Backlinks is basically any blog or website out there that is linking to your blog. It makes your blog appear to be a more credible resource in the eyes of Google. And what you are building is something called domain authority. The more people that are linking to your particular blog, the more credible that resource appears to be and the higher you're going to rank in search results. And doing guest posts on other blogs or a guest post for guest posts is one of the best ways to do this. Now on the topic of backlinking, you do not ever under any circumstances want to buy links Google can tell when someone is just selling links and you're going to get a penalty, a backlink penalty against your blog and you're going to be shadow banned. So I would never recommend paying for backlinks or doing any kind of backlink building service, but you can reach out to other blogs in your niche and see if they'd be willing to let you do a guest post and then link to your article within that guest post. So just to show you guys an example of one of the blogs that we did a guest post on, it was an article we did on the stock market versus peer-to-peer -peer lending for a blog called purefinance101.com. A friend of mine runs this blog here, and this is an article I wrote for his blog that talks about investing in peer-to-peer -peer lending versus investing in the stock market. And as you can see here, uh, down below, there are a number of different links here. Some of these are links to his own blog, and there's also links to my blog here. 
uh, where we have a link to the stock market as a complete beginner. This is a link to one of my cornerstone pieces of content, Beginner's Guide to Investing in the Stock Market. There was also a link here to the compound interest article that I had written. And so it's basically, you know, you're writing an article for them, but you're also embedding a couple of links to your own blog. That way you're building your ranking authority and getting some backlinks in the process. So that is step number six. It's not necessary, but it can definitely help you get the ball rolling. That is reaching out to other, you know, blogs in your niche and asking them for guest posting opportunities. And in some cases it might make sense for you guys to both swap guest posts and they'll post on your blog and you'll post on theirs and it's kind of beneficial for everybody as a result. Okay, so that wraps up step number six, which is an optional step to reach out to other blogs in your niche for some guest posting opportunities. And step number seven comes down to how to make more money with your blog. And it's one of the easiest things you can do. That is by offering a lead magnet and collecting emails and making money on the back end. Now, what I mean by backend monetization is that you're collecting emails and then you're going to set up an autoresponder that's going to send emails to people that may or may not be affiliate related or you're promoting content that may eventually make you money. Now, I know that sounds confusing. I promise you guys it is not. It's relatively easy to implement. Uh, and I'll show you guys exactly where you're seeing this on my site. So I showed you early on, on the sidebar here that get the beginner's guide to investing. People will click on this and then they will drop their name and email. And once they subscribe, I will immediately send them an email automatically that has a Dropbox link where they can download that resource. But then they are starting off in an email marketing sequence that I wrote where they're going to receive a series of marketing emails that have information about my different affiliates. And so it's a way to capture some traffic on the back end and get some conversions for some of my affiliates and ultimately make more money with my blog. Now, I literally just started implementing this about a week ago. I don't have a ton of data to show you, but the email marketing service that I use and the one I recommend is called Aweber. In the past, I have used MailChimp, and the problem with MailChimp is that they actually don't allow affiliate marketing. A lot of people don't realize that, but they'll set up a MailChimp account, they'll get up and running, and then they're gonna start affiliate marketing, and it's only a matter of time until they catch on and they're gonna ban your account. Uh, they don't like people who write about money, making money online, get rich. They think it's all, you know, they lump it under get rich quick scheme. And I have a lot of friends of mine who used MailChimp and they were sending content about money or making money or side hustle ideas, ways to make money online. And basically MailChimp would block their account for those reasons. I have never heard of that happening with Aweber. They seem to be more lenient with affiliate marketing. And so if you do plan on doing affiliate marketing with your blog and you're gonna use an email marketing service, I would recommend using Aweber for that reason, or at least I would avoid MailChimp so you guys don't end up building a whole email sequence and then having your account blocked and then starting over from the beginning. And as you guys know already, you know, I'm an affiliate marketer. That is where I earn the majority of my money. And of course I am affiliated with Aweber. If you guys do decide that you are looking to open an account with them, I have a link in the description below. Uh, it is a way for you guys to give back to me at no additional cost. And I certainly do appreciate it because a fair amount of research and work did go into this video, but it's certainly not a requirement. It's up to you if you guys decide to use that link. Um, I just prefer to be straightforward and honest about it just so you guys know that I am using affiliate links. Uh, but I'm using Aweber myself, really enjoy this email marketing service. And I have two different lists in here. I have my affiliate marketing course, which is a list I'm building right now. And this one right here, Investing Simple. This is all email subscribers from my Investing Simple blog and Investing Simple Instagram. So as you can see today, we've gotten 140 emails. That's because we're currently running a promotion on the Investing Simple Instagram. So we're getting a lot of them today. Yesterday we had five. We're usually averaging five to 10 emails per day. Uh, and like I said, we just began implementing this recently. So we don't have a ton of data to go off of. And we have a total of 481 uh, emails here in the mix. And so we have a total of 453 people who have subscribed to this Investing Simple list. So more importantly, what exactly is this doing for us? I'm gonna show you guys my email marketing sequence over here. So it's pretty easy to set up campaigns here through Aweber. This is the one that we have set up right now. 
So basically when somebody subscribes to my email list, when they drop their name and email, these are the emails they're going to receive. First of all, they're going to immediately receive this email here with their free investing guide. That is the open rate and the click through rate on that email. And then the next day we immediately hit them with an affiliate offer from Webull. So we say ready to start investing, here's a free stock. And as you can see, the open rate's pretty decent on that email, 31% open rate with a 10% click rate, which is actually quite high. So we haven't really had time to look at this data to see how many people have actually come across from the email marketing side of things, but we are definitely liking the results we are seeing so far. Then they get an email that talks about a $1 million mistake they could be potentially making, which is investing, you know, and paying high fees through an investing account. And then we immediately follow up with a free zero fee investing platform. And as you can see, the click rate for this one is not necessarily that good. But again, we haven't had enough people go through this funnel yet for us to really know how this is performing. But you can always tweak your emails uh, as you go and figure out how to increase that click through rate and the open rate with them. Uh, we literally just started implementing this like a week ago and it's to the point where not even everybody has made their way through the entire email sequence. So we don't wanna mess with anything just yet. But early on in the email sequence, we have that affiliate email here where they can get that free stock and we have a really good click through rate there at 10%. So this is definitely going to be adding to the income for this blog. Uh, and we'll see how this is doing for us probably you know, in a month or so, especially after we optimize some of these emails. So in terms of the emails we're getting from the blog, like I said, we're probably averaging five or 10 per day. And so that is anywhere from 150 to 300 emails per month. And all of those people are gonna get this email sequence and have the potential to click on some of those affiliate links, allowing us to earn more money. So this is one of the easiest ways that you can implement affiliate marketing. Uh, my cover here that I showed you guys, I had this done right on Fiverr.com. This cost me about $40, so I didn't make any of this stuff. You can go on Fiverr, you can have people you know, make a cover for your ebook. They also paginated my book, so I'm always outsourcing a ton of stuff on Fiverr. And personally, you know, I like using Aweber for my affiliate marketing, but this is hands down the easiest way to start making more money with a blog is by, you know, monetizing on the back end, by collecting emails, offering up a free resource and doing some kind of email marketing sequence. It's going to be an automated system that's going to put more money in your pocket. Okay. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this entire video. This has absolutely been a marathon, probably one of my longest videos to date. Let me know in the comment section below if you've made it to the very end of this video. I'm always curious how many people actually watch the whole thing. I really appreciate you guys for sticking around and I hope this has been tremendously valuable to you. Don't forget to bookmark this video, uh, you know, to save it for a later date if you guys want to look back on this. I know I threw a lot at you, but this is a great seven step process you can follow to get your blog off the ground in 2019. As I mentioned, you know, I am affiliated with a couple of these different offerings here with, you know, Fiverr.com, affiliated with Aweber, as well as SiteGround. I have links for all of them down below. If you guys do decide you wanna support me by using those links, you absolutely don't have to, but it is certainly appreciated and it helps to allow me to make more videos like this. So all of those links are going to be in the description below, as well as an outline of everything we talked about in this video. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.